Underrated. Rated or evaluated too low, underestimated, or undervalued. Synonyms. Undervalue. Underestimate. Be wrong about. Now, for the past few years, I've always said that the Plus series of galaxies have always been the most underrated. I think that the Galaxy S22 Plus is still the best phone that Samsung has released this year. If there was one statement to describe my first experience with the Galaxy S23 Plus, this phone is going to be underrated, underappreciated, and it's going to be the most well-polished phone in 2023. And even though I still stand strong on those opinions because that's how I was feeling at the time, I have to admit that the Galaxy S24 Plus kind of put them to shame. And see, the Galaxy S22 Plus and S23 Plus are pretty underrated for their time, but for good reason. No one ever denied that these phones were more than capable of giving you a good experience, but the biggest question surrounding them has always been, is the Plus series overrated? And for the right reasons, many people went with the competitors. Why pay $1,000 for a phone that only has a 1080p display, a lower tier camera, and is basically just a bigger variant of the regular S series phone? especially when you have phones like the Pixel 7 Pro and iPhone 14 Pro that offer much more premium specs for the price. Again, I see why people had their doubts about the Plus series, and I also see why Samsung felt like the S24 Plus was a make or break product for the Plus series going forward. And just like Kobe Bryant in the fourth quarter of a crucial must-win game, Samsung delivered. Every single thing that most people have been complaining about with the last few generations has been addressed and fixed. The display has gone from the outdated 1080p resolution to 1440p just like the S24 Ultra. The camera software has improved a lot, limiting shutter speed, and has better overall quality. And this is easily the biggest margin of difference between the Plus and the regular S series phone. Basically meaning that all three phones in the S series have enough differences to where each are even more catered to a specific type of user. And what's even more impressive is the fact that the Galaxy S24 Plus was able to address all of its previous problems while still keeping that $1,000 price tag. Which kind of makes it the biggest upgrade of 2024 so far. And that's why I decided to pick up the S24 Plus again after 3 months and show you guys how it's been holding up. How was it handling One UI 6.1, revisiting the battery performance, and most importantly, comparing it to other phones in its price range. Now, the first topic that I want to discuss when it comes to the Galaxy S24 Plus is not the display, not the battery, not the software, but instead, I kind of wanted to take a broad look at who this phone is truly for. Now, with the recent upgrades from last year's S23 Plus, Samsung has done a great job at pushing boundaries by not only straying the S24 Plus further away from the regular S24, but by also making it comparable to their top tier flagship, the Galaxy S24 Ultra. If you wanted something in the price range of the Galaxy S24, but with faster charging, a bigger size, better specs, and that same Samsung signature style, the S24 Plus is a great alternative that doesn't stretch too far. And if you're someone who feels like the Galaxy S24 Ultra is overkill in price and accessories, and instead would prefer a phone with the same size, same charging speeds, very similar specs, and will give you damn near the same performance for $300 less, the Galaxy S24 Plus is also in your ballpark. So you guys can kind of get the idea of what the true purpose of the S24 Plus is. It's the ultimate middle child that doesn't give you too much and also doesn't starve you of a top tier experience. But instead, it gives you just that right amount that will have you satisfied with the money that you spent. And speaking of satisfaction, the display is the most obvious upgrade when it comes to quality, durability, and size. It stands at 6.7 inches with a dynamic AMOLED LTPO panel. And even though the biggest upgrade has been its transition from 1080p to 1440p, trust me when I say that it does not end there. Last year's Galaxy S23 Ultra has 1750 nits of peak brightness, while the S24 is at 2600 nits peak, making it damn near 1000 nits brighter, which is a really big step up. And for a better comparison, the iPhone 15 Pro Max is at 2000 nits, and the Pixel 8 Pro stands at 2400 nits, basically meaning that the Galaxy S24 Plus still beats them out when it comes to overall brightness. And trust me when I say that, that's not the only thing that the S24 Plus is leading in. The ultrasonic fingerprint sensor is my personal favorite way of unlocking my phone. And not only is it much faster and more accurate than the Pixel 8 Pro, but it's entirely better than the iPhone 15 Pro Max since it still has yet to implement one. The S24 Plus's facial recognition is the closest thing that we have to compete with Apple's Face ID. And although it's slightly less fast and accurate, I will admit that it's much closer in competition compared to the Pixel 8 Pro that is kind of far behind. But I will give credit to competition. One area where all of these phones are damn near the exact same is resolution. All three have a 1440p display, and the main thing that differentiates them is color and white balance. 
the iPhone and Pixel have a better white balance. But when it comes to color and vibrance, the S24 Plus is by far the best in comparison. Putting these phones side by side, you can see what each phone prioritizes and also what types of videos that I preferred on my S24 Plus. If I want to watch an MKBHD type of video where the resolution is the main focus, then all of these phones are extremely similar. But if you are someone who prefers vibrancy and exaggeration of color, the S24 Plus is amazing, especially when it comes to home screens, colorful videos, and different apps all across the board. Now, although the Galaxy, Pixel, and iPhone have a 120Hz refresh rate, I think it's safe to say that each phone has a significantly different feel to the point where I would say I have a preference. The iPhone has a very slow yet smooth scrolling speed that feels like butter. The Pixel 8 Pro has a very fast scrolling speed that can get out of control if you let it. And the Galaxy S24 Plus is right in the middle. And I'm not going to lie, it's a pretty tough battle for me because although I do love the iPhone's 120Hz feel, it can feel a bit slow at times, which is why I lean more towards Galaxy phones in general. Because the S24 Plus has the perfect amount to where I can scroll extremely fast while still maintaining that smooth control. Now, although the Galaxy S24 Plus is very comparable to the Galaxy S24 Ultra, one of the main ways that they are very different is one of the first things that you look at within a phone. And that's build. Now, the build quality does take a hit since Samsung has made the phone cheaper than the S24 Ultra, but by no means is it an easily breakable phone in any way. And despite the price, it's actually very comparable in terms of durability. Both the S24 Plus and S24 Ultra are protected by Gorilla Glass Victus 2 on the back. The S24 Plus continues Victus 2 on the front, while the S24 Ultra is slightly upgraded on the front with Corning and Gorilla Armor. Durability can be pretty shaky for me because I never dropped my S24 Plus and I always use a case to protect it. So if you were thinking about using yours without one, I would like to note that concrete will crack any phone, so it's much better to be more careless on solid surfaces like hardwood or tile. And this tip is only the worst case scenario for people who drop their phones a lot, but if you do break your phone a lot, I would say get a case and a screen protector for longevity. Now another important aspect of build quality for me is cleanliness. And despite all of the fancy smanchy names that the Ultra might have, it's still only slightly more different when it comes to feel and material. Now the material on the S24 Ultra is definitely more durable. Both phones have the exact same feel when it comes to that matte smoothness. Both backs are able to negate fingerprints very well. And both are not only very easy to clean, but also keep clean. The S24 Plus now has matte feeling sides, which is really good at negating fingerprints. And it also aesthetically has the same feel as the S24 Ultra's titanium sides. Looking at differences, comfort was one of the few advantages that the S24 Plus had over the S24 Ultra. The S24 Ultra had a very boxy frame, which can be pretty awkward to hold, especially when I'm regularly using it and the pointy corners are stabbing my hand. But with the S24 Plus, it has much more rounded corners, which are not only much more comfortable to hold vertically or horizontally, but the boxy frame helps me maintain a better grip all around, which is a pretty great advantage. Now, battery is very subjective. There are many different aspects that go into it, which is kind of why I compared my Pixel 8 Pro to my S24 Plus, got around the same screen time, and made sure I used them the exact same way for a day before I give you guys my final result. On Monday, I used my Pixel 8 Pro, and on Tuesday, I used my Galaxy S24 Plus. And I tried my best to live like the movie Groundhog Day. I mainly went to the gym and got work done at home using both. During my days, I used GPS, play music wrote scripts, and play some games, and I was able to get 6-7 to seven hours of screen time on both, and even though I used them to the same capacity, the S24 Plus was surprisingly able to get me 15% more battery, which says a lot about not only the battery, but also how well it handles the software. I always use 5G. I'm not gonna lie, there were times where I was on Wi-Fi when I was at home. I didn't use power saving mode. My brightness was always high. And I didn't put either phone on a charger for the whole day. The S24 Plus had much faster charging than my Pixel 8 Pro. With my 45 watt fast charger, I'm able to charge my S24 Plus from zero to 100 in one hour and five minutes. And with the Pixel 8 Pro, it only supports 30 watt charging, which means that it goes from zero to 100 in two hours and 12 minutes. So not only does the S24 Plus last longer than the Pixel 8 Pro in terms of battery, but it also can recover much faster if you need extra juice. Now in terms of performance, I live in the US, so my S24 Plus is powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chip. I think it basically goes neck and neck with the iPhone 15 Pro Max's A17 Pro chip. It also has 12 gigs of RAM, which is kind of overkill for a phone, but it is still good since you are paying over a thousand bucks. Picking up my S24 Plus after a month, I decided to wipe the dust off my processor and play some Call of Duty Mobile. I usually play on the highest settings, and as you can see, I get no lags, the frame rate maintains, and there wasn't one time where I got a crash or a hiccup. 
Even playing games like Asphalt 9 were fun, the processing power mixed in with the beautiful colors of the display, and the fact that the resolution is top tier was the ultimate decider on whether or not the S24 Plus is a great phone to game on, and it won me over. Camera is another department where the S24 Plus is able to step up. It has the same 50 megapixel main along with a 10 megapixel telephoto and a 12 megapixel ultra wide. But from my experience, the software is where it's made its biggest leap. Shutter speed has gotten much better. Right here, you can see me capturing some flicks of a moving car. And not only is it faster, but it was also able to take some high quality pics at a very high rate. Selfies have also improved a lot. I was an avid hater since the S23 Plus will make my skin much lighter, but I feel like the S24 Plus is much more true to my tone. The depth of blur is top tier, the sharpness isn't too overbearing, and I was able to capture some really great photos on it. Everyday pictures were always top tier, even on last year's S23 Plus. I've always loved the color and vibrancies that the main camera is able to capture. Everything was very punchy, and even though the inside photos take a minor hit, they were still pretty good. Videos are okay in my opinion. I prefer not to shoot any content on this phone, especially since the inside videos aren't always true to color and are very heavily dependent on perfect lighting. But other than that, pans are smooth, outside videos are great, and even though it has its moments, it's kinda still mid. Man, all right, you guys, those are pretty much my thoughts on the Galaxy S24 Plus after three months. I love how Samsung is redeeming the whole S series one by one. The S24 Plus was the last phone in the series that needed a good refresh, and Samsung did not disappoint. From the power, to the display, to the battery, all the way down to its overall performance, the S24 Plus made all the necessary adjustments that actually makes it worth the price and the strongest candidate for being underrated. And don't forget, it supports seven years worth of software upgrades. Damn. Now, as many of you guys know, smartphones are really expensive. Your smartphone, wallet, and keys are essential valuables that many of us need to function in everyday life. And if you lose any of these items, it's a big hit, but by far, I would say the biggest hit is your smartphone. See, when your wallet is stolen, many of your cars can be canceled and replaced when your keys are stolen. More than likely, the person doesn't know where you live and can do nothing with them. But when it comes to your phone, there's a significantly less chance that it won't be returned to you. Since not only can the person who has it be able to sell it for money, but they'll also be looking to steal data from it. Since we often put valuable information in our phones, which is a serious threat to your personal information. And a lot of times, even the thought of having your phone stolen can make you feel extremely vulnerable. Which is why I think that having a safety mechanism will relieve some stress in case you're ever in a situation where you need to recover your lost phone. And fortunately, I believe that MFinder is the perfect solution. Now, MFinder is an app that will assist in helping you recover your lost or stolen phone and provides different functions that will protect your personal information that's in the missing phone. And one of the ways MFinder does this is by severely restricting use of the lost phone, meaning that if you put it in lost and locked mode with an MFinder, you will be able to display a message to whoever has your phone from the lock screen, and you'll also be able to leave important contact information so they can get back to you and possibly sort out the problem. MFinder also uses real-time locations, meaning that the locations will refresh every 30 minutes, staying up to date on where your phone is at. It tracks location to where you put it in lost mode. And also, whenever the person who has your phone presses a button, MFinder will track it. It takes photos using the front and back of the lost phone's camera when the location is recorded, so you can check the surroundings of the lost phone and identify the person who found it. And it'll search for nearby Wi-Fi to give you some more details on that specific location. And once you feel like you've reached the destination of where your lost phone is located, MFinder will allow you to use sound alerts, which basically means that you can play a siren on your lost phone, and it'll be at max volume, no matter if it's in vibrate or silent mode. This is a lost device. Help the owner find this device back. This device was declared lost. Please take calls from the device owner. This device's location is being tracked. This is a lost device. Please take calls from the device owner who will be paying you off. <laughs> Going deeper into the mini modes that MFinder offers, you'll be able to check the surroundings in real time with the camera. This is a lost device. The device is initiating a video call in 10 seconds and the surroundings will be watched by the device owner. Call. And in rare cases that all hope is lost, MFinder will let you back up and delete your data remotely so that your phone is the only loss that you take. And at least your personal information will be protected. Losing a smartphone is always a tough situation to be in, but with MFinder, the probability of recovering your lost smartphone is very high and you'll get a great chance at getting it back. As of May 2024, MFinder is only on Android phones, meaning that if you have a Galaxy, Pixel, OnePlus, or any other phone under the Android umbrella, MFinder has got you covered. And if you are interested in MFinder, a 14-day free trial is available when you first subscribe, so it's completely free to try it out. 
And if you are a forgetful person who often loses your belongings, M Finder is the way to go. So don't waste any more time worrying about what you're going to do if you lose your phone and download M Finder today. You, you got my phone. Motherfucker. Yo, bro, trying to play one on one? With you? Nah, I'm good. You wanna bet I could beat you? First bucket wins. <laughs> Alright. First point wins, check up. Respect, respect, respect.